Hey everyone, Delph here. You can check out my channels here. Today I'm reviewing Final Fantasy, specifically the Japanese version that was released for the Famicom, as opposed to the NES version which was released in the US and presumably Europe. As far as I know, the games are practically identical, although there are some subtle differences which could hypothetically affect gameplay. Uh, if you were speedrunning, for example. Uh, but for most players, it's just slight graphical changes. But if you're curious as to why, how they're different, the enemy encounter tables I think are different at least in some locations. So if you're doing RNG manipulation to get certain encounters, you'd get different encounters in some places if you are playing the Japanese version. So as for the game itself, I have to admit that I've never been so disappointed in a game and also that this game is easily the worst NES game I've ever played. Now, I haven't played particularly many NES games and I've played a lot of really good NES games. So it's not as if I have tons of bad games to compare it to. So I'm sure that many NES games are much worse and I'm sure that many NES games are much worse, and that on the main this game's actually pretty good, but the extent to which this game feels antiquated is honestly quite shocking. For starters, the game is mostly menuing, and the game's menuing feels quite sluggish, with some spells taking about two or three seconds to register on each foe individually, and then each subsequent piece of text taking an additional one to two seconds. And this is on every spell and attack for your four party members and up to nine enemies. So battles add up quickly and can take minutes at a time. On this basis alone, the game is vaguely unplayable, but the game also manages to somehow lack a significant number of features which are generally taken for granted in modern Final Fantasy style video games. So for instance, there are no Phoenix Downs. If a character dies in battle, they must be resurrected either in town or with the game's single resurrection spell. This is especially amusing given the game's propensity to throw enemies with instant kill attacks at you. And this can be a frustrating way to die in this game. But that's sort of just the tip of the iceberg. The game's item system is wonky in other ways which are fairly unpalatable. So for example, if you are buying items in an item shop, you can only buy one item at a time. This is obnoxious, but it's exacerbated by the game's single biggest problem, that being that there is exactly one type of potion in the game, and it heals for only about 30 HP. So in modern Final Fantasy games, this is not the case. More expensive healing items that heal for more HP are fairly common, meaning that if they had simply implemented a stronger potion, buying only one item at a time would have been fine. Instead, you may have to sit there in the shop and spam the buy button on potions for minutes at a time because you are going to either want or need 99 potions from many dungeons, depending on where you are in the game and your exact strategy. Now to be fair, there are ways around this, potentially, so you could spam certain items which give you free healing in battle, but that would also prove somewhat grindy and time consuming, and it wouldn't necessarily always work, and you'd probably still need lots of potions just in case anyway. So it's not intolerably bad, but it is painfully rudimentary. Now you might at this point wonder about healing spells, because surely those are an option, right? And those actually do help, but it's a great segue into how terrible the magic system as well. So the magic system in this game is a good system if you're wandering around town grinding enemies for golden experience. But when it comes time to actually delve into the game's dungeons, the system loses a lot of its power and charm. This is because it operates on a charge and levels system, wherein each set of spells has a corresponding rank, and the spellcaster is able to cast a certain number of spells of that rank, which is sort of like in Dungeons & Dragons. In point of practice, this often means you'll simply not have enough spell casts to be able to consistently cast your best and most useful spells. And this is because you'll generally only have somewhere between 1-3 to three casts of those spells at any given time, which is enough to get you through maybe 5% of the battles in any given dungeon. This problem is made much more prominent by two other problems. The first one is that the game lacks any way of restoring these spell charges in a dungeon. Again, the item system is so bare bones that there isn't even an item that restores magic points. But this is further exacerbated by the fact that spell damage or the chance for a spell to succeed has no relationship to stats like intelligence. They essentially do fixed ranges of damage throughout the entire game. Now this makes ranks 1 and 2 spells practically worthless after you've beaten the third boss. And that means that those 6 rank 1 spell casts you have are virtually worthless. Now to be fair, that means that a magic user with healing spells in rank 1 can simply spend all of those spell casts on healing spells. But even so... The game simply doesn't give you enough spell casts, in my opinion, even in scenarios where magic is insanely useful. And the game's designers knew it was a problem, so the second half of the game is littered with items that can be used to cast certain spells an infinite number of times. 
The way that the spells are divided into levels in theory forces you to cast a, a more diverse range of spells, which I do appreciate, but it also means that when casting any spell, you no longer are able to cast another spell of the same rank, which makes a lot of the spells less useful in practice. So you might think this is a bad game, but there are really incredible things about the game. It's very unlike Final Fantasy IV, for example, which feels very linear and story-driven. This game has sort of that quintessential adventure game feel. It's tough to understand if you've never played a game like it. It kind of feels like the original Dragon Warrior, or maybe even Dark Souls. So even though the game is really actually linear in practice, the way it's designed makes it feel as if it's open-ended and that you can really go anywhere. The first area, for example, you save a princess, and then the bridge to the north opens up. And in point of fact, there are only two locations to the north you can reach, but the game never says directly, go to the town of Provoca to the northeast. So it almost feels like you could wind up anywhere if you head north. Now, once you hit, do hit Provoca and get the ship, the game opens up again, and it doesn't tell you exactly where to go, and so it feels like your quest is actually kind of open-ended and it does reward you for exploring the locations that you now have access to. Now, of course, in practice, you must go find the crown in the cave to the southwest. That's the only way to progress the story. But it's also a really tough dungeon, and it pays to be prepared by going to the towns and buying better items and stuff like that. Games like this have an unmistakable classic charm that's difficult to describe if you've never played one, but they are fun. They are interesting. Anyway, in conclusion, the game has an iconic and old-school charm that's difficult to emulate and gives it an enduring legacy. I actually do like this game. But the game's systems are so painfully antiquated to the point that it's easily the worst NES game I have ever played. And again, haven't played a ton of NES games, not an expert on NES games. I've played a bunch of really good NES games, so it's not really a fair comparison. Um, but it's still the worst NES game I have played. The game is sluggish, balances all over the place. It's a very frustrating game unless you're cheesing and grinding, uh, which would be the way I'd recommend playing this game if you want to. Um, I was a little disappointed, though, because I'm very nostalgic for the Game Boy Advance remake of this game. Uh, that GBA version of this game is probably my favorite Final Fantasy game, so I cannot possibly recommend playing either the Famicom or NES version of this game, even if there is some charm to them. I would highly recommend one of the remakes or remasters, which I do believe are an improvement over the original version in almost every way, and I'll cover those in the future. So, thanks for watching.